Welcome to the True Crime Squad. I'm Christy Brower here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey, Katie. Hello. How's it going? It is going. Oh my gosh. Is your <laughs> brain fried? Mm-hmm. Mine too. I'm on major information overload. That's I am too. One thing with doing true crime, like I do consider myself to be a good researcher and a good reader and you know, c- capable, yeah. right? But man, sometimes there's just so much information in my brain that I yeah. don't know where to file it all, you know? <laughs> I, I, like I do today. know, and I'm feeling like that today as well. Yeah. So this is a Mormon Misdeeds episode. You know, we mm-hmm. do these periodically, and they go on our Mormon Misdeeds podcast as well as on our regular stream. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to give an update in the Tim Ballard situation. We've talked about that quite a bit already. Mm-hmm. And then talk about some connections between some other rogue Mormons that have gone off the deep end and done terrible things. Mm-hmm. And how the, do these people all connect? And in a way, yes, they do. Uh, in some ways, literally they do. Mm-hmm. But in a lot of ways, it is an ideology that is sitting out there on the fringe of Mormonism, mainstream mm-hmm. Mormonism, um, that they all seem to have fallen. I don't know. I don't want to say victim too, because they're not victims, but they were no. very susceptible to these delusions. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get to that, but we want to go through some of the Tim Ballard lawsuit stuff first, just talk about some pieces of it. Um, because it's huge all in of its own. But this is such, this is a much bigger topic than even that. Oh, yeah. And if you follow us, and if you happen to be a Mormon or an ex-Mormon, you know that there have been, in the last few years, some really terrible things happen. Hor- m- murders and terrible crimes committed by people who were mainstream Mormons who got far afield Mm -hmm. and it turns out that they're all getting far afield from the same kind of source material yeah and this was something that i didn't fully understand because i i left the mormon church when i was 21 you know that was Mm -hmm. 26 years ago so most of this stuff i didn't know anything about personally or directly and it's taken a lot to get my head around most of it right i think we've we're both like holy shit but we want to at least acknowledge it, put some names out there, some writings, some things to help some of this make a little more sense about where these yeah. beliefs are coming from. Yeah. And and why these folks think that they can just assign themselves profits and then go do whatever horrible things they want to do in the name of God. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening. Right. And the hall pass they are giving themselves to do yeah. so. As yep. if... Uh, the rules don't apply to them any longer. The laws don't apply to them any longer. They're cool. Yes. Yes. And there are several different reasons for that. Some of which we're going to talk about today. Mm-hmm. We can't talk about all of it yet because it's so much. It's going to take some time to roll out this information. And just for us to get it around, get our heads around it as Exmos, mm-hmm. whew, we were not on the fringe like this when we grew up as Mormon kids. No. Mm-mm. This stuff is not familiar to either of us directly, um, but we're, we're, we're catching up. Mm-hmm. So um, a new allegation made recently around the Tim Ballard situation has been made that um, M. Russell Ballard and potentially other high up leaders of the Mormon church revealed tithing records of high dollar donors Uh to Tim Ballard to use for Operation Underground Railroad fundraising. Yeah. That's huge. Um, Of course, the Mormon church has come out and denied it. First, Uh they came out and just gave their kind of pat answer of what their policy is. And then they've come out directly and denied it, Uh um, which, of course, they would. Uh 
But, you know, the, the question here is, how deeply did all of this go? Or yeah. does it go now? So I want to share a couple of screenshots from an article about this particular issue. Uh, talking a little bit about tithing and the Mormon church's attitude toward tithing. Because the idea of tithing is that you give 10% um, of your income for your entire life. And it is definitely a pay-to-play kind of situation that you cannot... Right reach the highest level of heaven you cannot reach the highest level of leadership in the mormon church if you do not pay this 10 percent. no you can't even attend the temple right yeah and this has come under some major scrutiny lately because mm -hmm. as you know a few months ago the mormon church had an sec fine uh, of five million dollars for having some shell corporations and hiding some of well a huge trove of money uh -huh. um, through um, Ensign Peak Investments. Um, you know, estimates now are somewhere around 150 to 175 billion dollars, billion with a B yeah. dollars being held while also seeking out that 10% from absolutely anyone who will give it. Yep. So here is a statement made by Neil L. Anderson um in this most recent mormon general conference which just happened last month in october he said sacred tithes do not belong to the leaders of the church they belong to the lord and are spent on missionary work temples church schools chapels and to help those in need they sort of left out building giant malls <laughs> unknown amounts of um real estate no. And cash. No, oh, I read really recently. Is going. Well, I yeah, I read recently that the Mormon church is like the fourth largest landholder in the United States. They are. They're buying a property right and left. Yeah. There are concerns that they are soon going to be owning housing and that you will actually have the Mormon church as your landlord. Oh, good Lord. So he went on to say the spiritual power of the divine law of tithing is not measured by the amount of money contributed for both the prosperous and the poor are commanded by the Lord to contribute 10% of their income. He said the power comes from placing our trust in the Lord, uh -huh. whatever that means. Okay. So then this is uh, what the general handbook has to say about the revealing of tithing information. The amount of tithing and other offerings paid by a donor is confidential. The guidebook for all Mormon church leaders states only the bishop and those who are authorized to handle or view these contributions should have access to this information. Church leaders, it adds, are to ensure that such data is not used for personal, political or commercial purposes. So Mormon church policy is uh -huh. that they don't share this information. I have it on good authority from several uh, ex-Mormon members who have worked at, as word clerks at one time or another. So tithing mm -hmm. was, you know, accepted through your church, through your ward, and then it was processed through your ward and sent on uh, to headquarters. It's not always done that way now. Sometimes it's just direct. But when we were kids, it was done right within the church, right within your ward, you know, your leadership. Mm -hmm. And I have it on good authority from several people who worked as word clerks that they were warned that if they were to ever reveal any tithing information to anyone, they would be immediately excommunicated. Yeah, so uh, it's a pretty big deal or supposed to be a pretty big deal to, re to reveal tithing records. I would imagine. I think those... that depends on who you are, though. I, obviously, yeah, the rules apply to thee and not to me, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, this is an allegation. We cannot prove it, but we do know that OUR has raised an ungodly amount of money. Uh -huh. And where did they find their donors, guys? <laughs> where do you think Mormon folk hero Tim Ballard found all of his very wealthy donors to give him their money to grift and assault people? Yep. It's just a question, something we ought to think about. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit 
about the lawsuit. So the thing about the lawsuit, or well, there's two now, but the thing to understand that I think is really important with the lawsuits is it's not just Tim Ballard being sued for the uh, sexual assault of multiple um, volunteers and employees. It is the board of Operation right. Underground as well, mm -hmm. because the victims are alleging that this was known to the board members. The, mm -hmm. the the couple's ruse and all of the manipulative tactics that Tim Ballard and others were engaging in mm -hmm. uh, was well known by the board and and was uh, rubber stamped by the board. Yeah. 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 Well, aren't they all men? Yeah. Yeah. So a few things to note. OUR raised money in order to have conducted multiple sting operations to purportedly rescue trafficked women and children. They called those ops, with those ops being conducted outside of the United States. Uh -huh. OUR is not a military organization, nor are they a police organization. They have actually no jurisdiction anywhere. Uh -huh. In the lawsuit, it alleges that many of these ops included wealthy men with no military training who wanted an experience vacation mm -hmm. where they dropped into third world countries to rescue trafficked children with photo opportunities and stories in the local papers of their heroics, all the while flying first class. Yeah. So all this money raised for Operation Underground Railroad was being used to take wealthy white guys on experiential vacations uh -huh. to save trafficked children. I mean, how gross can you get? How bored and entitled yeah. and privileged do you have to be that this is when it, the way you want to spend your money? Right. And how disgusting to boost your ego on the mm -hmm. backs of trafficked women and children. Mm -hmm. it, uh, the the uh, lawsuit also alleges that while promotional media and me, while promotional and media materials made the ops appear to be paramilitary drop-ins to arrest traffickers and rescue children, what most ops consisted of was going to strip clubs and massage parlors across the world after flying first class to get there and staying at five-star hotels on boats and at Verbos across the globe. Mm -hmm. Apparently the ops themselves were a fundraising machine mm -hmm. and they really were for show because that's how they got people to donate money was yep. to see these, you know, wonderful souls out there saving women and children, which we of course have no actual proof. Tim Ballard has himself said that he has saved 7,000 women and children, but there are no records. There's no proof that any of that is even true. Right. But in doing these ops, Ballard becomes this very recognized face of anti-child trafficking. And of course, everyone is in agreement that child trafficking is wrong. It shouldn't happen. But what it gave him was legitimacy, huge legitimacy to the yeah. point that he was appointed as a special advisor to Ivanka Trump in mm -hmm. October of 2017. And then he was invited by President Trump to join a White House anti-trafficking advisory board. Mm -hmm. So he really built himself up through this work with OUR to be this huge mythical, you know, hero, superhero to um, be completing these ops and doing this work which again was false information. Uh -huh. And then in comes the uh, attorney general of Utah, huh. yeah, Sean Reyes. So Katie, tell us a little bit about the Sean Reyes, Tim Ballard connection. Well, these two have been having quite the bromance since 2013. And Sean Reyes, so Sean Reyes was appointed the attorney general around 2013, 2014, when the other attorney general was removed in amidst a big scandal. And then come mm -hmm. Sean Reyes. Uh, he's been elected now twice, reelected to that seat. But uh, 
pretty much immediately he got on board with OUR and he and uh, Tim Ballard became really good friends. And from 2013 on, they uh, have been really tight. They've appeared many times at different speaking engagements together. They have, uh, Reyes has gone on an op, I believe, to Columbia with mm -hmm. him. He has spoken publicly about him in, you know, the highest of compliments and regards. He compares him to people like Martin Luther King and other modern day abolitionists. Uh, there was a movie, the OUR movie that came out, The Abolitionists. He was involved in that. He was mm -hmm. in that. Uh, they've kind of gone back and forth. OUR has donated nearly a million dollars to an uh, anti-trafficking task force that Reyes uh, formed through the state of Utah, uh, which I think is kind of backwards, and maybe I don't know, but I think it's odd that a private entity is but a nonprofit, of course, but is donating sums like that back to the state for their trafficking efforts. It's a little odd. Yeah. Uh, I will say that I think that Sean Ray is, uh, in some ways, I think that uh, he at least started with his heart in the right place, that he really mm -hmm. believed in, in the mission, the cause, you know, really. And that's what I think really sucks is that a lot of people that have gotten involved here they weren't skeezy worms. They were people that really believed in trafficking. They also believed in the numbers that they were being shown that may or may mm -hmm. not be true, but that were terrifying about the number of uh, sex trafficked people or trafficked people across the world. And, you know, they really wanted to be a part of the, uh, the cause. And I believe Sean Reyes kind of started out that way. I, but mm -hmm. the more he, these two were involved, uh, They've been to the White House together. They have been to the Republican National Convention to speak. They have been all over the world on ops. They've been involved with each other for a long time. And in fact, uh, there was a time, I believe in 2019, when Reyes did a podcast and invited uh, Tim Ballard and his wife on that he introduced him as his best friend in the world. Like, these guys have been very tight. Now, then, of course, as we know, an investigation in Davis County, Utah, was opened against OUR uh, because there were a lot of rumblings of misdoings and of, of money mismanagement and things. Yeah. And there was a pretty immediate concern, and the FBI was involved in that investigation. And the prosecutor in uh, Davis County was kind of like, Yes, Reyes, you know, you shouldn't be involved in this because you might be part of the problem. He had taken some steps to try to kind of block him from that. Right. But some of the, one thing that was said there that I think is really telling. This was October 12th, and this is from the Salt Lake Tribune. This was October 12th, 2020. So this was three years ago. Uh, they obtained some documents through a public records request. This is OUR Operations Director Dave Lopez being interviewed by a Davis County Attorney Investigator Brad Purdy. Lopez told Purdy, OUR is not doing operations anymore. This is three years ago, you guys. And if OUR was asked how many rescues the group was physically participating in, it would be a staggering answer. If people knew that, they actually weren't the ones doing the operations, they would feel incredibly deceived. This was three years ago. The a investigator lot has happened in that three years. The investigator also wrote that Lopez knows Sean Reyes, the Utah Attorney General, very well personally and believes he is aware of what OUR has been doing. Dave believes that if this investigation moves forward, he believes Reyes will begin to distance himself from OUR. And then two months later on December 23rd, a screening memo was put in place intended to prevent Reyes and Chief of Staff Rick Cantrell from having any involvement in the Davis County investigation because they knew that he shouldn't be involved in this because he is involved in this. Right. So... But then, as we know, 
the Davis County uh, investigation came to a very strange and abrupt close. Yes, it did. And there's a lot of suspicion that potentially he may have had something to do with that. So on February 9th, 2023, Davis County Attorney Troy Rawlings emails Spencer Austin. He was the head of the Attorney General's Office of Criminal Division or Office Criminal Division. He included 75 pages of documents and numerous attachments that are later released by the Attorney General's Office in a public records request. Rawlings says he has 10,000 pages of readings done by Janet Russon, the, the psychic readings, who was mm -hmm. paid by OUR to provide intelligence on the ops. He says there is a hearing. Who is set also for, named in the lawsuit. Yes. Uh, he says there's a hearing set for May 3rd and 4th and anticipates testimony will be sought from Austin. Reyes, and another employee of the office. Again, they are going to be asking Reyes to testify. This is what was said on February 9th, 2023. On March 28th, 2023, Rawlings emails Spencer Austin again and copies Reyes, stating he will no longer be subpoenaing employees and former employees of the Attorney General's office to testify, but would still like information requested by Craig Webb, about how OUR's donations were spent. Later that day, Rawlings notifies OUR he is closing the investigation. So they went from, you're going to come in here and talk to us, you people in charge of the uh, law enforcement in this state that are involved mm -hmm. in this, to no, we're not going to, but we still need more info, to yeah, we're just going to shut the whole thing down, literally in a day. And... Yeah. Of course, as we know, the lawsuit uh, does allege that Sean Reyes was, uh, in, you know, practicing uh, witness uh, tampering and witness intimidation, that some of the main mm -hmm. witnesses, one of the main witnesses uh, withdrew, and they believe that it is because of uh, pressure that was put on her by Reyes. Those are things that are just believed. We don't know all of that to be true yet, except for that many of these things have been said in the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Now... Of course, Sean Reyes right now is doing exactly what was predicted and is taking many steps back, trying mm -hmm. to save his own career. So, but as we know, also a couple of months ago, Mitt Romney had announced that he was not going to rerun in Utah as a state senator. And there had been a scuttlebutt that maybe Reyes would run for that seat. And Reyes announced on social media he would not be running. But a dear friend of his that is a hero and a patriot would be making a special announcement in just a few days. And then in just a few days, that's when all of this shit broke wide open about Tim Ballard. And we know yeah, that was Tim Ballard he was talking about. Yeah. yeah. But Reyes is, uh, so he is trying to take many steps back now and be like, whoa, 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 whoa. I just, uh, Tim Ballard, who that? So this is a mm -hmm. short clip of a press conference that he gave just recently that was supposed to be about why the state is suing TikTok because they are, you know, TikTok's the big bad guy. They're the uh, the boogeyman these days for trafficking and for, you know, all things bad. Or for, uh, you know, sharing lots of information about Tim Ballard and Sean Reyes mm -hmm. and the home church. Yeah. Because there's tons of it. So this was actually a press conference about their, uh, you know, bully techniques against TikTok. But of course, the reporters in the room didn't give a shit about that. They wanted to talk about Tim Ballard. So this is a brief clip of that. We'll answer uh, a number of questions. I think uh, our office is going to issue a statement to try to address other questions. We've answered many from the media already. Uh, the statement could come today, tomorrow. But we'll, we'll address a number of issues that are still uh, being asked about that. One thing I do want to say, because I think they're fair questions, um, is these allegations, which I believe are serious and ought to be taken seriously, I hope they don't uh, in any way diminish the resolve that we have as a community, as a state, definitely in, in my office, uh, to continue to attack the issue of human trafficking. I hope it doesn't diminish the urgency that many of us feel uh, to combat what I think is a very real crime that affects real people 
in the state of Utah. Uh, it is a crime that preys on the most vulnerable amongst us. And again, going back to the most vulnerable, I think our children in the state of Utah are most vulnerable. It's why we filed our lawsuit against TikTok. And if there are any more questions about TikTok, I'm happy to what did you know about the couples? We, we, can, we can ask if there are any more questions about TikTok today. Is there any more questions about TikTok? Anyone? What did you know about the couples group then? Do we have any more questions about TikTok? Yes. <laughs> no, no, we don't have any more questions uh, about TikTok because we want to know more about this shit, Sean Reyes. We want right. to know what no you did. No one is buying this smoke screen, you jackass. We want to know what you did. Yeah. So. That's kind of where things stand. Obviously, he's saying he did no such thing. He would have never tampered with witnesses. But that's not what but the law says. Saying. Of course he's saying that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm very happy, yeah. though, that there are so many reporters on top of this now. Nobody's buying this bullshit. No. And it, it does my heart good because growing up a Mormon, mm -hmm. these kinds of questions do not normally get asked. No. This kind of stuff happens behind closed doors. Uh -huh. No one ever says anything about it publicly. Nobody ever answers any questions. Uh -huh. And this stuff is splashed all over the media. And that's why they're mad at TikTok. It's everywhere on TikTok. <laughs> oh, they're and always they're always so mad at TikTok because, you know, Gen Z is uh, all over TikTok doing all kinds of political stuff. And it's absolutely killing the right and just because... telling the truth and showing the truth of all yeah. kinds of things the kinds of stuff that we have lived with our entire lives this kind of you know quietly sh you know um shove it under the rug kinds of shit that goes on yeah. well it's just not happening anymore they no. don't have control of the release of information the way that they used to mm -hmm. well that's pretty huge i mean i'm sure that this is just cya at this point with sean reyes but mm -hmm. holy crap you know, mm -hmm. it, it does not look good at all. No, it doesn't. And I would imagine he is uh, actually pretty terrified for what else is going to come out, what else is going to be said, because obviously his hands are not clean. Uh, but right. again, we're not alleging anything because we don't know. But uh, it is very interesting, the things that are being said. Um, yeah. I will, I'll tell you too, I do have a short clip uh, if you if you want to use it. I, I didn't tell you that, but I had uploaded a short clip of... Uh, the other new phone who dis guy M. Russell Ballard. Yes, please. I was hoping that you did have that. Yeah, I do. So this is M. Russell Ballard. This is the uh, LDS Church Apostle. But this is like the number three guy who, you know, supposedly is no relation number four. to uh, number four guy. He is the uh, supposedly no relation, but uh, yes, was best friends. No, was not friends. Yes, did know. No, didn't know. Really didn't have any, you know, thing to do with Tim Ballard guy. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is him speaking at uh, Brigham Young University, Idaho, which is in my town. Uh, it looks to me like at commencement. And uh, this is what he had to say. Travel to Plymouth, Massachusetts with my friend Tim Ballard to learn more about what he had learned regarding Nephi's vision of these early pilgrims and how their history corroborates Nephi's vision. I had the what? What was that? You, you had travel? the opportunity to travel with who? What was that? Uh, I, I thought I heard. Was that Tim Ballard? Mm -hmm. No. It must have been Mim Tallard or something. That couldn't have been right. Right. No. right. Mim Tallard, I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah. yet again, with his vision, that was the important part before I get mm -hmm. to uh, acerbic here. Let, let's listen to it one more time. Listen to what he says about Tim Ballard's vision of Nephi, because that's important to what we're talking travel about Travel to here. Plymouth, Massachusetts with my friend Tim Ballard to learn more about what he had learned regarding Nephi's vision of these early pilgrims and how their history corroborates Nephi's vision. I had the opportunity. You know who's been, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say a lot of, uh, some of the things we've been learning from Tim, uh, about Tim Ballard was his visions with uh nephi and if you don't know who nephi is nephi is a hero from the book of mormon that uh mormons really revere yes and, and tim's been having visions from nephi 
by taking ketamine and then having a scribe present so Tim can pontificate. And all of these visions are about how great a guy Tim Ballard is Mm -hmm. and how accomplished he's going to be and how he's going to be the next president of the United States and he's going to be the next president of the Mormon church, the the new prophet, all of this stuff. Yeah, they're all about him. Everything, Mm -hmm. all of this centers Tim Ballard Mm -hmm. as the hero. He's Nephi Mm -hmm. in this time. Yep. And, you know, Nephi in the Book of Mormon was directed to murder a sleeping man by Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And Nephi did it. And that's one of the reasons that he's such a hero. Mm-hmm. That very unclear line mm-hmm. about morality. And if it's, if, you know, Jesus or God tell you to do it in a vision, then it's okay. Right. And we're seeing some really, really scary stuff happening Mm -hmm. around those particular beliefs. Right. And that's part of what's happening in, uh, of what's being laid out in this lawsuit is that Tim himself reported this information to the women who he has um, allegedly assaulted And given them the impression that everything that he's doing is certified by God, that he's got permission Mm -hmm. to be doing all of it. Yeah. Um, And that, you know, M. Russell Nelson said it was okay. And then Nephi said it was okay. And God has told him it's okay. And that's Tim slowly built himself up to this sort of godlike status and that's what they're alleging in this lawsuit that then caused these women who grew up mormons Mm -hmm. um and who are very susceptible to this idea that a man can you know receive direct revelation from god and then whatever he's told he has to do he has to do it that they then in turn also have to do it this came you guys from the very formation of the mormon church and that is Joseph Smith's first vision Mm -hmm. where, and there are actually seven different versions of the first vision and they were not published until many years after um, they supposedly that this supposedly occurred. But Joseph Smith started with this whole story that God and, and an angel, or maybe Jesus, depending on which version you read, came to him and told him that he was to, um, restore the gospel of Jesus Christ to the planet through his own church. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, uh, an an angel with a sword came to him and said, you got to now be a polygamist. Please feel feel free to go marry teenage girls and other men's wives. Yeah. And that is, that's literally the basis of Mormonism, you guys. Yep. What Tim Ballard has been doing, it follows the same track. And it follows the same track as several other people who have done some terrible (laughs) things in the name of God and Jesus and Mormonism lately. And Mm -hmm. we're going to get to that in a minute. I wanted to get to a few more things in the, um, in the lawsuit, just because I think it's important. And then we're going to get to some of that. Now, the only, uh, another well-known name that Ballard has gotten all wrapped up with is Glenn Beck. Oh, yeah. You probably know who Glenn Beck is, you know, well-known conservative political commentator, Mm -hmm. radio host, television producer, blah, 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 that guy. So he donated a lot of money to OUR to get it going. Mm -hmm. And then Tim Ballard and Glenn Beck formed another company, and that company is called Nazarene. And it was used to fight Christian causes across the globe and, like, protect Christians from persecution basically Mm -hmm. and um beck really lended his credibility and access to his giant media network to ballard yet again giving tim ballard more credibility more reasons why the women that got involved in the couple's ruse would listen to him right i mean between glenn beck sean reyes and apostles in the mormon church all wrapping their arms around this guy, why wouldn't these people listen to him? 
Right, because you know who else was endorsing him? Tony Robbins. Yes. Tony Robbins, well-known author, speaker, Mm -hmm. um, has raised absolutely huge amounts of money for Operation Underground Railroad. Yeah. 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 So they believed. They believed. They did. They did. I I genuinely think they did, at least to some extent. Mm -hmm. I don't think that any of these people who had much bigger reputations and a lot more to lose than Tim Ballard did would have hung their hat on this unless they believed. Right. But you can see the underpinnings of why they would. Oh, sure. It all goes back. There's a common thread all the way back to Joseph Smith. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept. This is you know, outside the realm of what the Mormon church teaches or wants to be true, but it is culturally what has been taught to all of us. And we're going to get to that. But first I wanted to share some financial information because I want you to know how much money we're actually talking about. Uh Uh, OUR reported in 2016, they brought in 16, $6.9 million in revenue. In 2019, it was $22.3 million in revenue. In 2020, it was $45 million. In uh, 2021, it was $52 million. And in 2022, it was $56 million. Yeah. We are talking about huge amounts of money. Mm-hmm. In 2022, Tim Ballard's IRS form shows that he received a salary of $525,958, half a million Mm dollars, while working for a nonprofit organization. But here's the thing that was also going on that is part of what brought Ballard down, is he had this big plan to bring in some for-profit companies that then OUR would funnel their money through, which would result in monetizing himself Mm-hmm. and making more money. And there are former employees that claim that Ballard made somewhere around $14 million through the nonprofits, as well as the half a million of his, that was his paycheck from OUR in 2022. Yeah. Um, this is absolutely huge money. Mm-hmm. For you a, know, of a course, foundation that people are donating to so that they can save the children. Right. Yeah. But how many children did they really save, guys? And why don't they know? And why is it that three years ago, their director told investigators that they weren't doing that? And that if donors knew that they weren't doing that, they would feel very betrayed. Three years ago. Right. Right. Doesn't add up, does it? No. And then enter Janet Russon. Mm -hmm. Janet Russon, who is a psychic from Utah, Mm -hmm. who is said to have been communicating with Nephi again, Mm -hmm. and using those readings to tell OUR where their ops should occur. Mm -hmm. There was also a lot of justification coming from these readings about everything that Tim Ballard did, that he was doing all the right stuff and that Mm -hmm. everything he did was okay with Nephi. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, Tim is very good at building structure all around himself that Mm -hmm. validates everything he does and validates himself. I mean, it Mm -hmm. is, he is falling from a high pedestal that he has built for himself. Mm -hmm. Um, And she would also predict the situations that they would be in in the future. Mm Mm-hmm and direct and would use these readings to direct the teams about where to locate trafficked children. Uh Look, guys, I don't have any problem with anybody getting a psychic reading if you want to. Should that be used to run operations for rescuing trafficked children? Absolutely not. No, definitely never. No. Yeah. And, you know, many of the statements that we've seen from OUR employees is that Uh everything she said was always wrong, Uh that it didn't, it didn't track, but Tim was convinced, you know, and because Tim was convinced he was convincing everyone else around him and he Uh is a very charismatic person. 
yeah. and has sucked in, obviously, a lot mm -hmm. of people. And then, of course, comes the couples rules. And that's where things uh -huh. really went bad. And we've talked a lot about the couples rules already. But this is Tim bringing in women who would pretend to be his spouse or partner on the op so that the traffickers weren't set off when he didn't partake of the victims, basically. Uh -huh. But I mean, the stuff that he did, if you read and I'll put a link to the to this um, document that is that has the uh, statements from the victims in the in, in the bigger lawsuit to read the absolutely terrifying situations that these women were placed in uh -huh. and often had to go along with terrible things to prevent being sexually assaulted yeah to uh, and you know sometimes attempts were made to sexually assault them and tim did uh -huh. not protect them yeah. it was terrifying but these women were not trained to do no. this these are volunteers you're literally talking about mormon housewives from utah right that were pretty yep and and that tim had to be attracted to they had to test mm -hmm. ahead of time to make sure he was attracted to them so that they would always mm -hmm. know he was turned on by them mm -hmm. it's so incredibly gross and manipulative well, yeah, because traffickers can smell uh attraction don't you know they can smell pheromones yeah and everybody when you read their statements they all believed that tim ballard knew what he was doing they all mm -hmm. believed that he had all this experience that he doesn't really have no they believe that he had all this knowledge that he doesn't really have. The dude is just real overconfident mm -hmm. and he convinced everybody. He duped a huge amount of people. Yeah. But these women thought that they were doing what was normally done when these ops happen, mm -hmm. that they were participating in something that this is how it's done. Well, you know? they were ge genuinely and legitimately there to save women and children. That's what right. they were there for. That's what they believed That's they were doing there. That's what they wanted, what they wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. And Tim would ask them things like, how far would you go to save a child? Yeah. It's incredibly abusive and gross. And they would be in other countries yeah. alone with Tim and his team mm -hmm. and really have no choice but to follow through on all kinds of creepy shit. Mm-hmm that happened um, and they would practice, you know, uh -huh. creepy stuff, going to strip clubs, uh -huh. going to bars, going to tantric yoga and couples massages and uh -huh. lap dances and stuff like that to uh -huh. prove that they could, you know, follow through in the field. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, well, some of them yeah. said that a part of their audition was giving Tim a blow job. Yes. Yeah. And they, he built himself up on such a pedestal that these folks genuinely believed that this is what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And that he was called of God and that this was all okay because mm -hmm. God said it was okay. Yep. Um, but it's well known that Ballard has been frequenting strip clubs in the Salt Lake Valley, mm -hmm. that he's done a huge amount of drinking mm -hmm. and drugs. Guys, this is all completely contrary to the teachings of the Mormon church and against his oh. own beliefs and what he said he was, you know, called to do. This is all the, against the rules, every single bit of it. Right. And all of these people that he's rubbing shoulders with, that he's taking with him on all these adventures and talking into donating and stuff. This is not what they stand for in any way at all. Or at least publicly it isn't. No. I think privately it may be. Um, throughout this time right. period, as all this stuff was happening, people were concerned about Tim and his drinking mm -hmm. and his use of ketamine and other drugs mm -hmm. that he was not doing well mm -hmm. mentally. Um, yeah. yeah. And all of this was being paid for, don't forget, by the donations to a nonprofit organization to fight human trafficking. How gross is that? It's so I, gross. I mean, the, the manipulation and the spin of all of this. 
when grifting and taking advantage of people financially in the yeah. name of children, I mean, it's done all the time, unfortunately. It's a big one. And right now, the running narrative, especially you look on Twitter and the conversations that are going on there, the people defending Tim Ballard, basically, you know how the uh, the uh, the narrative works here that uh, you're either with us or against us. And so if you, if anyone has the nerve to post an article or say anything about this situation, you're a pedo, you mm -hmm. are a child molester, you don't care about trafficked women and children yeah. if you don't support Tim Ballard. Right. Which is People insane. Are sucked in deep, you mm -hmm. guys. Because uh, Tim Ballard is just one man, mm -hmm. one human being, mm -hmm. one obviously very flawed human being. Sean Reyes and at one point said that Tim Ballard had eradicated trafficking in three different countries. Are you fucking kidding me? Mm -hmm. But you know what I've always found interesting about Tim Ballard is he always fights trafficking in other countries. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of trafficking right here in the United States. There's plenty of trafficking going on right there in Utah. Mm -hmm. Well, but in he's fact, going to other countries to do this shit, guys, because yeah. the anonymity. Reyes's operation that was, you know, operating legally and lawfully with actual law enforcement agents in the time that he's had that set up, they have done quite a few stings and ops and have freed quite a few women and children from trafficking situations they have mm -hmm. but they've done it a different way like because they're a government entity with actual yeah. jurisdiction and power mm -hmm. also the cia because yes. there oh, was yes. talk <laughs> that tim was a former cia agent right <gasps> nay nay the cia <laughs> says that Tim Ballard was an unpaid intern that failed his polygraph and was let go. He was never a CIA agent. That's not yes. true at all. That right there is everything you need to know about Tim Ballard. Mm -hmm. you, you, can, you hold that up to every other allegation made about him. Mm -hmm. And what does it tell you? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, um, you know, there's all the stuff about the couple's ruse in here that we've talked about quite a bit and, and how women had to prove themselves. The other thing that he did is he constantly bred discontent within OUR and within these women with the couple's ruses. He talked shitty mm -hmm. about all of them to each other oh, yeah. and said, oh, don't trust so-and-so. Don't talk to them. They did this to me. Oh, don't talk mm -hmm. to that woman. She fell in love with me and kissed me. And so, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. So and they're they all threatening to, to kill other. my wife. Yes. They're threatening they're... to kill his wife, Catherine. Catherine, you're probably lucky to be alive because if this had gone a little further down the Daybell Vallo track, you might not be. Right? So this was how he was keeping these women from comparing notes. Mm -hmm. Till they finally did. And now we see why. But the manipulation is absolutely horrific. Mm-hmm. So I told you about uh, Nephi, how Nephi, you know, was directed by Jesus to kill this man because he needed some documents he had, blah, blah, blah. Well, Ballard would use that as an example uh -huh. of what he would call unconventional tasks. And he would say that that story demonstrates that sometimes the Holy Spirit asks uh -huh. people to perform unconventional tasks uh -huh. as an excuse for why they were doing things that were 100% against everything they'd all been taught and anything uh -huh. that anybody thought was even right. Uh -huh. Yeah. There was also, here's, here's a daybell one for you. Janet Russon would tell the couples ruse women that it was okay if they had some sexual contact because all of them had been married to Tim in previous lives. Yes, that's correct. Yep. This previous lives thing is real weird, guys, because Mormons mm -hmm. do not believe in multiple lives. They do not believe in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. They do not believe in that. That is not a part of Mormon doctrine. Mm -hmm. But all of these 
wackadoodles that we've got mm-hmm. going on hurting people, mm-hmm. they're all they're all using that. Yeah. We're gonna get to that. Yes. Yeah. We're gonna get Which to that. Cultures across the world believe in past lives. That's not right. crazy. That's something that no. A lot of people believe in, I believe in, you know, I mean, that's a pretty normal uh, belief outside of most Christianity and uh, Mormonism. But for all of these Mormons to be not just preaching it and believing it, but using it as a tool. Yeah. Is wild, really wild. It is. It is. And it's it's one of the things that I think, you know, obviously Chad Daybell said that to multiple women. Uh, mm-hmm. Lori, but uh, others as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We know that this is a this is a narrative that's being passed around. Mm-hmm. Um, Ballard also just straight up threatened these women. Uh, yeah. One of them had a text message that said, "We will have so much shit on each other. We will be deterred into silence on all things forever." Mm-hmm. They were using um, burner phones, mm-hmm. and they were using a special app on the burner phone that would protect all of their messages Mm -hmm. so that no one in their family or other people could see the messages between them. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, this all seems like straight up, right? Yeah. Also. So Dave Bell ask. Yeah. Right. Right. They also asked these women to uh, sign uh, NDAs. Of course. To protect the children and other victims. Yeah. Uh Okay. Not Tim Ballard, no, you are, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically what's in the lawsuit. And then there are statements made by each of the uh, of the victims. Mm-hmm. So I will link that in the show notes so that you can go read it. Read their statements if you can stomach it. Mm-hmm. They are tough to read. Yeah. They are tough to read. These women were absolutely terrified and in very dangerous situations in which they yes had no business being Mm -hmm. and had some very scary things happen to them by Tim and by other people. Yeah. And sometimes they just did what the best they could to stay safe. Yeah. They were also told that they all had targets on their backs from the cartels. Yes. Whatever the hell that means. Mm -hmm. And that uh, they had to be really careful because they could, they could get killed for doing what they've Mm -hmm. been doing. Yeah. And again, Tim's way up on that pedestal with all mm-hmm. those endorsements. Right. But definitely him. you want to stay in, uh, you know, Tim and OUR's good standing because uh, you've got a target on your back. You're in mm-hmm. now. You're one of us. Yeah. 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 So that's a lot of what's been alleged. Of course, it's a lawsuit. It's a, These are allegations. We don't know for sure what all is true, but this is some pretty inflammatory stuff. Mm-hmm. So then there's the question, because you start to see some common threads, some common themes. And I want to talk specifically about Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell and uh, uh, Spring Thibodeau. Spring Mm -hmm. Thibodeau is the woman who kidnapped her 16-year-old son recently from Gilbert, Arizona, went on the run with him, uh, scared the hell out of his family. Mm -hmm. Um, She and her brother and her adult daughter took off, said goodbye to the world, took Mm -hmm. money and all kinds of survival gear, said they might not ever be back, or maybe they'd be back in a few years and Mm -hmm. something amazing was going to happen because uh, this poor 16 year old kid was the Davidic servant and they had to get him out there for some amazing thing to happen. And to have his visions and his experiences. Yeah. Which this kid was not a willing participant in. No. He was not a part of these beliefs, but did you hear the name Gilbert, Arizona? And where did we get Lori Vallow from? Gilbert, Arizona. Gilbert, if you guys wouldn't mind cleaning it up, that would be neat. Right. So this goes back to the preparing of people conferences, all the prepper stuff, all of the Mm -hmm. doomsday, end of the world, extreme side of Mormonism. It's extreme, but it isn't in that we're all Mormons are preppers. We were raised as preppers from the time we were little kids. You bet. We had plenty of food storage. We always had, our dad had guns. We had a freezer full of meat. Like there, and and also our our parent, our dad and our grandparents all kept cash at home. 
because uh-huh. uh, the banks were going to collapse uh-huh. at some point. These things are all, these are common teachings. They were common oh, yeah. teachings for us when we oh, were yeah. kids in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. This stuff was very real. Uh-huh. Well, it's been taken oh, to a the whole food other storage level. angle. Oh my God. It's huge. Uh, Mormon families are known to spend thousands of dollars on food storage that's socked away just in case at any moment. A huge amount of which expires and goes to waste. Oh yeah, most of it. Because yeah. you know what doesn't happen? The second coming. Because this mm-hmm. is all leading up to the apocalypse and the second coming of Jesus Christ, that it's going to be at any moment, right? So these folks that are, the, you know, they're Mormons, they're involved in the prepper movement. And there are a couple of books that I want to bring your attention to because that's where some of this stuff has come from. Uh This one is called Visions of Glory, as told to John Pontius. Uh So Visions of Glory is is said to be a true account of near-death experiences. Oh, there's another one. NDEs are a big thing in Mormonism and in Mormon lore. You know, uh-huh. Betty Eady, the very first, um, what was her book? It was like the first book that came out about NDEs. She was a Mormon. Uh-huh. Something by the light, Saved by the Light. Oh, I anyway. think it was Saved by the Light, yeah. Betty but of course, Eady. we know about Chad Daybell and his NDEs that uh, his right. books were based on. And that's where he got his uh, gifts of discernment and knowing from. Yeah. Yeah. So visions of glory sort of took Mormons by storm at one point. And I didn't, this was after I was no longer involved. Um, But I'm just going to read what the back of the book says. Visions of glory recounts the amazing near-death experiences and subsequent visions of Spencer as told to author Uh, John Pontius. For the first time, Spencer shares his incredible experience, visions of the, sorry, it's a little hard to read. Oh, overwhelming events that he saw um, uh, reshaping the United States and parts of Canada. So this comes back again to that the there's a more the Mormons are going to save the Constitution in the United States. Mm-hmm. There's lots of prophecies white horse about prophecy. That. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, he describes foreign invasion, a devastating plague, floods, earthquakes, changes in weather, and the constellations of heaven, the return of the ten tribes of Israel, the miraculous journey of the saints to build the new Jerusalem. Guess where mm-hmm. it's supposed to be? Right here where we live, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and let's see, oh, New Jerusalem and Temple, and the gathering of the elect by the 144,000. Daybell, anyone? Mm-hmm. The miracles of the millennium and the final uh, celestialization of the earth and the end of the millennium. So when this book came out, it was touted as being true, that they mm-hmm. were, you know, protecting the high up Mormon that these things had all happened to. And a lot of Mormons read that book and believed it to be 100% true, accurate, the case, case closed, this is happening. Mm -hmm. And that's where this whole prepper movement went crazy. And people started buying tents and food and Mm -hmm. um, guns and, um, you know, survival gear and stuff, because this was a prophecy, Mm -hmm. basically. That the end time was coming. And you know where people were supposed to move? Here. Where, where we live. Mm-hmm. To live Why? in their tent cities. Yeah. Why it gotta be us, man? <laughs> to live in their tent cities. So that <laughs> book brings together a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, that book was not sanctioned by the LDS Church and has been um, discredited multiple times mm-hmm. because the problem that the LDS Church has is that there's one prophet, right? Uh-huh. His name right now is Russell M. Nelson. He's 99 years old. Uh-huh. Well, the problem with there only being one prophet is that there's a lot of other guys out there who think it probably should be them. 
Mm-hmm. Tim Ballard. Mm-hmm. Chad, Chad Daybell. And lots of others. Spring Thibodeau's son. Yeah. Now, and there's so much. I we can't tell you all of it because there's so much. But well, I wanted also, to drop a couple uh, of names. The guy who kidnapped Elizabeth Smart. I can't yes. even think of his name, but he was another Mormon who he thought was he another. was the actual prophet. Yeah. Right. And we've heard quite a bit about the Davidic servants and in because that's what uh, Spring Thibodeau was calling her son, right? Mm-hmm. So that brought me to this guy right here. Mm-hmm. This guy's name is Abraham Gileadi. Abraham Gileadi is um, a Hebrew language scholar and is known for his expertise and analysis of the book of Isaiah. Um, he was a, uh, a professor at BYU, uh, Provo for a long uh-huh. time and really believed by many people to be like a real expert in a lot of stuff. Uh-huh. Well, he is also one of the September six. So the September six are Mormon scholars who were excommunicated or disfellowshipped by the Mormon church in September of 1993, all because they were doing scholarly work that was kind of criticizing or actually speaking out against Mormon church doctrine and leadership. Right. And so Gileadi specifically was talking about the Davidic servant and analyzing the book of Isaiah Uh and, you know, kind of putting out a lot of sort of prophetical kinds of things. His argument was that the Isaiah prophecies pointed to a human Davidic king who would emerge in the last days, who was separate from Jesus Christ, because Uh a lot of people think that the Davidic servant is Jesus. Well, now he's saying, no, that's, it's going to be a human man. Uh Hmm. Like Tim Ballard or Chad Daybell. Sound familiar? Uh Uh, So his stuff got really controversial. Um, Deseret book pulled his books that they were selling, which is the Mormon um, publisher, uh, publisher and bookstore. Yeah. And he was excommunicated on September 15th of 1993. He was, however, later um, given his membership back and is now, again, a Mormon. (laughs) Uh, Which, I don't know, no one has ever been able to come right forward, come out really and say why that is. Um, But his books that interpreted Mormon scripture challenged the exclusive right of leaders to define doctrine. Uh-huh. Maybe there's more than one prophet, guys, is what it's coming down to. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah, so his excommunication was actually ex- officially expunged as though it never happened. <laughs> and he is still currently. <laughs> I know. Why? So why would you teachings... want to come back? Why? Right? Why would you? But his teachings and visions of glory are a pretty good foundation. And they're not the only ones. There are others. But my God, you guys, it's so much stuff. But because the other thing about visions of glory was visions of glory talked about how humans could become exalted beings. Mm -hmm. Lori Vallow, anyone? Let me tell you a little bit. There's another. There's one other thing that is supposed to be a secret in Mormonism, but you know, definitely isn't because nothing is a secret in Mormonism because you can't control the narrative anymore. And that is the second anointing. And the second anointing is yeah. a really important part of all of this too. Mm-hmm. So the second anointing is like a super secret temple ordinance that is offered only to the most holy or more likely wealthy and powerful yeah. married members. Mm-hmm. Well, wife by association but basically husband yeah in which this ordinance ensures salvation guarantees exaltation and confers godhood on human beings 
So when the ordinance happens, and we know these ordinances are happening currently because I have read multiple accounts of people who've actually been through the second anointing and then realized what a bunch of utter bullshit this was and fell away. But they are anointed as a priest or king and their wife as a priestess or queen. Yeah. And sealed to the highest degree of salvation available to Mormon, myth Mormon uh, theology. So basically, as a human, you're now godlike. Uh -huh. you are going to the celestial kingdom, which is the highest level of heaven in Mormonism, no matter what you do in this life, so long as you don't spill innocent blood. Uh -huh. So the implication is you can do anything you want. You can go out there in the world and take money from people, uh -huh. lie, steal, cheat on your wife. You can do anything and you will have no consequences short of killing someone who is innocent and who determines innocence. Yep. So it's a very, it's very dangerous. It basically gives people carte blanche uh -huh. to do whatever they want. And then you look at some of these apostles like M. Russell Ballard, for example. Right. And you wonder, was he involved in a bunch of this shady stuff? Cause he's had the second anointing and he knows that he's going to heaven no matter what in his belief system. Right. And is that where some of these people's attitude is coming from? That they are literally gods on earth? Daybell, Vallow? Yeah. Tim Ballard? Where they yeah. believe that they can do anything? Remember, uh -huh. he believed that he could do anything as long as it was, you know, he could do unusual things. Because right. as long as he was doing it in the name of God, it was okay. Yeah. Unusual things. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like sexually assaulting women and taking mm -hmm. advantage of the movement of anti-trafficking to pad yep. his own pockets and build his own fame. Yep. There's so much more guys. This is a deep, deep rabbit hole, but this, mm -hmm. I wanted to bring that thread through that mm -hmm. this started with Joseph Smith. Okay. Yep. This is exactly what he did to build yep. the Mormon church. And now there are other people building splinters mm -hmm. doing exactly the same thing because mm -hmm. we have all of these Mostly men, although I would say Lori Ballow definitely saw herself as being an omniscient being. Uh, definitely. As well. Still does, clearly, if you listen to her sentencing. Oh, absolutely. Um, and look at the terrible things that they have done. And Lori Ballow sat right there in court and said, there were no murders here. Mm -hmm. I didn't and spill innocent blood, guys. Jesus knows me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Jesus knows me. Well, I, I would love to wrap us up with a little quote here. Uh, this is a portion of a vision that Tom Harrison, who was a former uh, therapist and uh, Visions of Glory supporter and, you know, a, a guy on the, in this club who uh, wrote yeah. this uh, about Tim Ballard. Mm -hmm. A vision. This is a vision he had about Tim Ballard. Yeah. You were protected against all opposition, that they will have no power over you. The law enforcement, the courts, the police, and those who fight against you will be frustrated in their attempts. You will come forth triumphant and successful. Tim, there was so much more given that was coming so fast that my mind can now not remember. Thank you for the opportunity to be a voice. God continue to bless you as a son, husband, father, brother, friend, learner, and fellow traveler on the earth. Sincerely, Tom Harrison. But hear that little beginning part one more time. You were protected against all opposition, that they will have no power over you. The law enforcement, courts, police, and those who fight against you will be frustrated in their attempts. Yeah. Yeah. Think Sean you, Tim, Reyes was part of that? Can do whatever you want. Yes. Mm -hmm. You, Tim, have had your second anointing. You, Tim, are a prophet of God. Mm -hmm. You can't sin. Yep. And law enforcement can't touch you. Yeah. Interesting. These are the delusions, guys. These are very dangerous beliefs. And they lead to, you know, in the case of Dave Vallow the destruction of many people, uh -huh. you know, fortunately, um, 
spring Thibodeau's husband got a hold of their son before they did something terrible to him. I have no idea what they were planning on that kid, but who the hell knows? No. And what if he said no? Right. Then what? He's evil and must be destroyed? Is he a zombie well, he, now? That was what his dad's worry was, was that the brother-in-law yeah. would do physical harm to him. Yeah. 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 So that's where we're at right now. These are the things that we mm-hmm. are, you know, wrapping our heads around understanding because there's a <laughs> if lot you've on made the it this far. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, there's a lot under the surface. It's much deeper than you might realize. And that's why we wanted to illustrate and talk to you about it. Because if you don't know Mormon doctrine, this doesn't all make sense. Um, it's all starting to come together. We're going to talk about all of that more. But I think we've done what we can do mm-hmm. on this topic today. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so thank you for being here. We will be back tonight, Wednesday, and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Mountain for our Case Updates live stream. And we'll be back with lots more um, awesome comment content to come. So please just stay tuned. Let us know what you think. Ask us your questions. We're This is a huge topic. And if we've explained something not well enough and it doesn't make sense, please leave us a comment and let us know. Because Mm -hmm. that is our goal, because we are ex-Mormons, is to explain this from that standpoint, Mm -hmm. to try to help the world understand what in the hell is going on. Yeah. And you know what? We are the True Crime Squad. Thanks for being here. Take care.